Mm-hmm. Hey, how are you doing? The Mi Band 4. Is it the best fitness tracker in the world right now? Is it the best Mi Band yet? Join me and we'll find the answers in the next few minutes. Welcome everyone, Tech for Road Channel. My name is Michael, and this <laughs> this is this watch face is hilarious. This is the Mi Band 4. It's the product I'm going to talk about in this review, and I'll put it side by side with the Mi Band 3. Now, uh, some words about the Mi Band 4. It's actually part of the Huami ecosystem. Someone is typing me. Let me check. Sorry. Uh, spam. So let me mute the sounds. It's muted now, so it's not going to disturb me any longer. This is part of Huami's ecosystem, and Huami is uh, one of those Xiaomi subsidiaries which are popular about the brand called Amazfit. That certainly you have heard, especially if you've watched our reviews about the Amazfit Verge, Amazfit Stratos, and so on. Well, uh, it's branded as Mi Band, apparently part of Xiaomi, manufactured by Huami, as I already mentioned. And uh, back in April, there was the announcement that the previous generation, the Mi Band 3, was sold in more than 1 million units worldwide, which makes it one of the uh, most popular ever fitness trackers. And question is, can Xiaomi, respectively Huami, replicate the same kind of success with the Mi Band 4? It's very likely that now the new generation, considering the loyalty of many Xiaomi users and more importantly, the attractive price is going to surpass these numbers and become the most popular fitness tracker ever, but only time can show us whether this is going to happen or not. In this episode, I'm going to talk about the hardware, I'm going to talk about the software and the features and of course my feedback based on two weeks of 24-7 usage and of course we'll Talk about how it compares to the Mi Band 3. I usually show you the process of unboxing, as it demonstrates a company's attitude towards presenting a product. We live in a world ruled by marketing, and we've often seen how shiny packages can sell poorly performing devices. I feel it is quite the opposite with this one. We actually have a downgrade from last year's boxes, and this one is cheaply designed. I have the feeling that I'm unboxing one of the many Chinese lower grade devices, but Let's say we can live with that. Inside, there's the band, some papers and a charging dock. I can see many people unhappy with the fact that you need to physically remove the strap from the unit, but in my opinion, Xiaomi are approaching this the right way. On one side, there is no way to misplace the connectors or lose contact during charging. And on the other side, this is the easiest way to educate the customers about the possibility for using different straps. My wife had the Mi Band 2, then the Mi Band 3, and I can promise you that during this time she has definitely given more money about straps than she ever paid for both of these fitness trackers. Not sure how much exactly Huami are making out of these additional accessories, but I'm pretty sure that make a very good amount of money out of these aftermarket look enhancers. Now, uh, we're going further with the most obvious and I would say major difference between the two generations, you can see the Mi Band 3 with this monochromic AMOLED display and this already is the colorful screen of the Mi Band 4. Yes, now the band is equipped with colorful AMOLED screen with the size of 0.95 inches. We have considerably larger screen surface if we compare it to older generation, but the band keeps its discrete shape and still looks gentle and nice to the wrist. They say it is supposed to be much brighter now and better visible in any conditions. Well, using the standard watch faces, you don't really get this feeling, but there are some watch faces that are very well visible even outdoors, even on a bright day. Other than that, it's likely powered by a new generation of Dialog Semiconductor Manufactured System on a chip, which is based on the ARM technology and very power efficient, comes with Bluetooth 5, 135mAh battery, PPG heart rate sensor and waterproofness up to 50 meters. On paper, 
All these specs are remarkable. The display is also fantastic, promising 24-bit color depth, as well as brightness up to 400 nits, which can compare with the brightness of flagship smartphone displays from a few years ago. There are a few sensors as well, which are tracking your physical activity, like the precise measurement of your steps. Considering the hardware, there might be two things that the most passionate tech fans might miss. Uh, first thing, it doesn't have GPS embedded which in my opinion is not a deal breaker because the band can still count on the GPS from your smartphone. Um, and certainly Xiaomi have taken this decision in favor of better battery life. And the second thing it doesn't have, it's uh, having no NFC chip inside. Actually, there is an NFC variation of this band, which is primarily going to be sold in China and would likely support payments only for the Chinese region. Um, I've heard some rumors that it would support also a Chinese AI functionality, you know, something like um, the Chinese version of um, Google Now, but I'm not really sure if, if that's planned to become a feature for the worldwide users. Now, going further to the software features, and actually this is the other segment where this band has had a number of brilliant enhancements. First of all, we'll talk about the navigation, which maybe we can start with exploring of this capacitive button, which is positioned right here. The screen is touch capable, just like Mi Band 3, and is responding to vertical and horizontal swipes. Good thing is that it is covered by tempered glass, which is not much far away from Gorilla Glass in terms of scratch resistant. It's no longer plastic and has oleophobic coverage, which reduces significantly the amount of fingerprints. To activate the display, you need to leave the wrist up or just tap, and then you can scroll up or down in order to access the most common features. Quick access to the menu called More Options, the notifications, the weather forecast and workouts, and swiping left or right by default is going to get you to the music player. Surprisingly, there even is possibility to turn up and down the volume, and people with smaller fingers will have better success, but it is remarkable how sensitive this touchscreen can be. Here are some of the sports modes. You can easily activate them from the band itself, and for some of the activities, it's going to connect to your phone and borrow the GPS signal. Heart rate information is also exceptional. There's PPG sensor, and you can have continuous heart rate measured 24 7. While I'm guiding you through the rest of the menus, I'd only say that the Mi Band 4 looks to me like the most complete fitness tracker ever, and in terms of user experience, I can say that after wearing for a couple of weeks, I can hardly point to any weakness, not at this price point. I know that a lot of people are using the Mi Band 3 and they're currently watching this video, and while often we have the suppressed hope that the next generation of something is not a meaningful update, this here is not revolutionary, but it has been updated so well in both hardware and software compartments that I guess that's going to be the toughest to beat device in the $30 price range. Few words about the smartphone application, which is again Mi Fit and is still designed and maintained by Huami. Few years later, it's not too colorful as it used to be in the past, and Huami are now taking the cleaner, smoother user experience, something that is in line with 2019's latest trends, and the application is now also close to perfection. In fact, it resembles a lot the interface of the Amazfit app, and I won't be surprised to see both apps getting merged at some point, but I can say for a fact that if you're using the Amazfit app and switch to MiFit, you won't feel much of a difference, except a major one, Mifi does not have direct integration of Strava. But there's a third-party app called Notify and Fitness for Mi Band, which takes care of most of the missing features in the original Mi Fit app. Concerning battery life, and I know a lot of you would be asking, why do you talk about battery life just now? Well, I wanted to share many other things, but now I'm on my 12th day of this first cycle with 25% left at the moment, so this band can easily last for two weeks with heavy usage. And I'll explain. Uh, during these 12 days, there was one firmware update. I've made numerous synchronizations. Um, heart rate 24-7, sleep tracking. Um, the screen brightness is set to a maximum, and I'm using notifications. Screen unlock feature, you know, it is as heavy usage as it could be with a few sports activities during that time, which were including 
this band to be connected to the phone's GPS. Yeah, and it still has 25% of juice, which means that with a little bit more conservative kind of usage, it would easily reach up to three weeks, maybe more. Notifications are very well visible and vibration is very strong. It's one of the few bands where you won't miss any alarm because of the good vibration. This was almost everything important that you had to know about the Mi Band 4. Uh, and to the questions from the beginning, is it the best Mi Band yet? Well, I can simply show you how the displays look like. The Mi Band 3 side by side with the Mi Band 4 from a distance. And you can clearly see how much brighter... What happened? This one died, no. Okay, how much brighter the Mi Band 3 actually is. Uh, the Mi Band 3 is at the maximum brightness, Mi Band 4 is at 4 out of 5 bars, and I guess that's, that's an easy win. To the other question, is it the best fitness tracker in the world right now? I guess so. Brilliant hardware, which includes larger battery, finally a colorful display with awesome brightness, even outdoors, outstanding build quality. Uh, a lot of improvements in the user interface department, better Mi Fit app. I guess that makes it the most complete fitness tracking solution that you can buy for around $30. And more importantly, it combines most of the requests coming from the community members. Now, to the minuses, no embedded GPS, which in my opinion is not a deal breaker. No NFC, or let's rephrase, no usable NFC for the international version yet. And no automatic detection of sports mode, which some other fitness trackers are capable of doing, although not that accurately. So yeah, in my opinion, this is the best fitness tracker you can buy for $30. And solution like Fitbit, Inspire, HR, the new Samsung fitness trackers and so on, they are in a serious trouble because in my opinion, that's gonna be the hardest to bid device from the fitness trackers in 2019. So how do you like it? Let me know in the comment section below. And one question to all of you that are Mi Band 3 users, are you going to upgrade to this buddy? That's been all about this episode. My name is Michael. It's been a great pleasure to have you in the last few minutes presenting you the Mi Band 4. And I'll see you in the next episodes.